and it just doesn't make sense. The fans keep tweeting at him. Clearly, Sean Evans is just ignoring us at this point to be on Hot Ones, and yet he invites Malcolm Gladwell on. I'm fun like Malcolm Gladwell. Doesn't he know that I solved Grubhub's hidden lore? Hey man, eat a Snickers. Why? You're not you when you're hungry. <laughs> Better? No, I'm not better. Why would I be better? I ate a freaking candy bar. No, I'm grumpy and still hungry and just like slightly fatter. This sucks. internet welcome to food theory where the only thing that's gonna cure my hangriness today is you hitting that subscribe button well you hitting that subscribe button and I don't know like maybe a cheeseburger did you hit it did you ring the bell too oh thank you I feel so much better now maybe I shouldn't be regulating my mood based on your subscription status but hey here we are theorists we've dissected a fair bit of food commercials over the last year but there's one campaign that's always gnawed at me from a scientific level those Snickers ads that claim that they can transform you into a cranky old celebrity my back hurts! <laughs> Oh, uh, sorry, it's actually the reverse. Biting into a Snickers turns you from a hangry D-list celebrity into your non-hangry normal self. Anyway, if you're unfamiliar with Snickers, you're not you when you're hungry campaign, let me take you back in time to when Betty White looked like, uh, she looked exactly the same as she does today. Let's set the scene, shall we? It's the late 2000s. Marvel is betting their marbles on the C-list character named Iron Man, the housing market's collapsing, and YouTube has this crazy idea of sharing its profits with its creators. Okay, we'll see how that one works out for ya. Meanwhile, Snickers Candy Bar, yeah, they're, uh, their sales aren't doing too great. Back in 2007, they had risked it all on an ambitious Super Bowl ad campaign simply called Manly Man. It, um, it did not go over well for many reasons. Uh, just play the clip, you'll see why. I think we just accidentally kissed. Quick, do something manly. Ah! In 30 seconds, they managed to offend pretty much everyone, and things didn't get any better in 2008 when they introduced Snickers Charged, a candy bar with 60 milligrams of caffeine, which is about the amount that you get in a shot of espresso and is starting to approach Red Bull levels. Mars, the parent company of Snickers, was desperate to keep their foothold as the number one candy bar company, so they hired advertising agency BBDO, and they came up with the golden idea, you're not you when you're hungry. The campaign was unleashed during the 2010 NFL Super Bowl and starred comedy legend Betty White trash talking her teammates. You're playing like Betty White out there. Ask out what your girlfriend said. Oh. Nothing hits comedy gold quite like an 88-year-old woman getting leveled by a tackle. She takes a bite out of a Snickers and magically, Mike feels more like himself. This commercial came to be known as one of the best Super Bowl commercials ever made, and it propelled the 80-year-old candy brand to record numbers. The sales of Snickers increased by $376 million from 2010 to 2012, regaining market share and solidifying its position as the world's foremost chocolate bar. Ten years later, Snickers is now the most popular candy bar in the world. And all because of an elderly character actor saying the line, Oh, man. come on, man, you've been riding me all day. Like, no wonder so much money gets dumped into advertising. Since 2010, Snickers has worked really hard to position itself as a solution for any time you feel a negative emotion. Rough day at work? Eat a Snickers. Horrific existential dread? Eat a Snickers. Just learned that you have an evil twin that's been gaslighting all your loved ones? Eat a Snickers. But really, is Snickers all that good at addressing the problem of hunger? I know it's got peanuts and caramel and chocolate, but like, how good is it really? And more importantly, is it actually the best candy bar to do the job? If I'm feeling hangry, what should I be grabbing? A willy gum? Some big nuts? A plop? And yes, those were all real candy bar names. So join me, friends, as we look into the science of satiation in order to identify what candy bar will truly transform me from a Mr. Bean into a ninja. <laughs> To begin, let's look at the Cytogung Liebenschmittel Satiety Index list, which ranks different foods and their ability to satisfy your hunger. According to this list, the most filling food of all the foods in the world is... a boiled potato. Yep, congratulations to Ireland and Idaho for that one. Maybe the Snickers motto should have been, eat a Snickers, because boiling a potato takes too long. Close behind potato is... the lingfish? Lingfish. Is, is that a typo? Do they mean lungfish? What is a lingfish? Hmm. No, de definitely a real thing. Weird. The reason it satisfies people is probably because they don't want another bite after seeing one of these monsters. Anyway, after the humble ling, you have yourself oatmeal, oranges, and finally, apples. You'll notice that unnamed Mars candy bar is actually included on the list at 70% satiety, just slightly 
only above donuts and cake, but still well below other snacks like jelly beans and popcorn. But despite what the ad campaign says, Snickers isn't interested in curing your hunger, it's interested in something else. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations defines hunger as, quote, an uncomfortable or painful physical sensation caused by insufficient consumption of dietary energy. Over 815 million people around the world go to bed hungry every night without food in their stomachs. Hunger is serious business. Snickers is instead focused on the feeling that you get in between meals when you feel like you could snack on something. And this has largely been their approach since the 1930s. Take a look at this ad from the 1980s and you'll see Snickers were made for moms who want to give their teenagers a wholesome snack between meals. That's right, Snickers is a wholesome snack, complete with 14 grams of fat and 29 grams of sugar. Look, I love myself candy and my eating habits are far from healthy. But let's call a spade a spade here. Your candy bar is the health equivalent of a McDonald's small fry. It's not even an exaggeration. The nutrition facts match up one for one. Also, this commercial from 1986 claims that Snickers takes the edge off your hunger and they poke me over beautifully. Snickers isn't claiming that it solves a real hunger. It's just saying that it'll get you through an annoying conference call or prevent your ravenous children from eating everything in sight while they wait for their dinner. So with the real question in mind, does Snickers cure that form of hunger? Well, Yes, and no, mostly no. When you haven't eaten for a while, the glucose levels in your blood decrease. This, in turn, causes the release of various hormones, including the stress hormone cortisol, as well as adrenaline. And that combination is what results in the hangriness that we understand today. You're stressed, and you're mad, and you're a little bit agitated from that adrenaline rush. And so a Snickers bar with its 29 grams of sugar, 4 grams of protein, and 1 gram of fiber is gonna help spike those glucose levels immediately, which is going to help in the short term, but may ultimately lead leave you hungrier than you were before. You see, science suggests that simple sugars ultimately leave you more hungry when you come off of that sugar high. Hungry? Why wait? Grab a Snickers and be hungrier later. It's like procrastinating on your own feelings. But okay, despite the ads, I don't think anyone expected Snickers to be the truly great meal replacement it claims to be. My question though is, how does it compare to other candy bars? In a competition of candy bars, which are all pretty bad solutions to the problem of hangry, maybe Snickers is the best of the worst. Maybe those peanuts really do make it the healthy option of candy bar. Maybe there really is something special in that holy trinity of nougat, caramel, and peanuts that sets Snickers above the rest. So to have ourselves some fun, I pulled together around 30 of the best-selling candy bars in the U.S. and then compared their nutrition facts to see if there was a better option out there that you could find at any checkout line or gas station. Sure, there are some niche candy bars that are loaded with dark chocolate, antioxidants, less sugar, but they aren't available everywhere, they aren't in the top seller list, and quite frankly, they're too darn expensive, so I don't care. The nutrition facts I chose to focus on were fats, fiber, protein, protein, and sugar. Anything with trans fat was just immediately out because that's the type of fat that's worst for your health. I then looked at protein because science has shown that it's the most filling of the macronutrients. However, that wasn't good enough. I wanted to keep sugar low because, as we just discussed, we want to avoid that sugar crash that results in us being hungrier later. So the less sugar, the better. In other words, I was going to be ranking bars based on high protein, low sugar ratios. Stuff that's going to keep you full without resulting in a crash. Lastly, I looked at fiber. Fiber is a complex complex carbohydrate, which means unlike simple sugars, it takes longer for the body to digest. Fiber, in fact, is so complex that the body just can't digest it, which means that it makes you feel fuller longer. Sweet potatoes, beans, and berries, all foods that are high in fiber, and thus better options to curbing your hunger. So a bar that's going to be high in fiber but low in calories is going to give us the most full mileage for what are otherwise just a bunch of empty, meaningless calories. Hungry? Fiber satisfies. I then totaled the rankings in each category to see which bar was best overall, low lowest score wins. And again, remember, I'm not saying necessarily that these bars are healthy by any means. I'm just looking for the healthiest and most filling in a category of bad options. So let's talk about that first category, trans fats. That qualification actually knocked out six of our contenders right off the bat, including Take Five, Three Musketeers, and you guessed it, Snickers bars. I will say that the overall amounts of trans fats in each of these bars was really small though, so I ended up throwing these guys back into the rankings. That said, I did find it amusing that my first data point immediately wiped out the candy bar that prompted us to do this whole hangry analysis in the first place. The other thing I noticed right off the bat while I was gathering data was that peanuts in Snickers really do seem to make a difference in the amount of protein each bar contains. When just talking about pure protein, no other calculations, Snickers came in at number three, just behind other peanut heavy candy bars, Payday and Mr. Good Bar. Peanut butter based candy bars also held their own in this category with Reese's and Snickers peanut butter having high protein content. But what I was really interested in was the overall rankings. When it comes to providing you with no nutritional value whatsoever, 
however, Skittles and Starburst dead last, both of them. Just a literal race to the bottom. Skittles also had the added knock against it for having trans fat. Like, literally anything is better for you than these guys when you're talking about satisfying your hunger. But when it comes to the top of our list, nothing compares to Payday, which crushed the competition. Coming in first place overall thanks to a first place finish in high protein to sugar ratio and second place in high fiber to calorie ratio. The differentiating factor here is that Payday is just a very different type of candy bar. It is jam-packed with peanuts. Unlike most of our other competitors, Payday doesn't actually contain any chocolate. Instead, it's a peanut coating around a caramel center, and that gives it big numbers in protein and fiber with lower numbers in calorie and sugar. Second place was also a peanut-based candy bar, the peanut and chocolate bar Mr. Good Bar. Again, a lot of peanuts bump the protein marks significantly higher than the competition, and the lack of any other sweet ingredients like caramel and nougat helped to keep the sugar content relatively low. Continuing on with that thread, Peanut M&M's had a solid performance in third place, all of the health of peanuts with all the unhealthiness of chocolate and added sugars. Seriously, this one could have been in first place had it not been for the 13 grams of added sugar. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups came in fourth, and the Peanut and Pretzel Bar Take 5, ironically enough, took fifth place, leaving Snickers in a satisfying sixth. So, there you have it, friends. You're not you when you're hungry. Grab a payday. The quote-unquote healthiest candy bar, with more protein and more fiber, with fewer calories and sugar than a Snickers. Or, you know, if you really want to cure that midday hangry feeling, get more sleep, drink more water, and exercise. That is the way to improve your stamina. Unfortunately, more than half the people in the United States don't drink enough water, only 24% get enough exercise, and one in three don't get enough sleep. So it doesn't look like hangry is gonna be going away anytime soon. Guess it's time for another candy bar. But hey, that's just a perfect opportunity to thank our sponsor for today's episode, Fetch. Fetch Rewards is a super easy to use free app where you earn rewards on literally anything you buy. Let's say hypothetically that you made a YouTube video that got you to buy around 35 different candy bars from the grocery store. Well, with Fetch, you just take that receipt, snap a picture of it, and bam! Seconds later, you have points to redeem. And if it's an e-receipt, no problem there. Fetch Rewards handles those too. It couldn't be easier. And then comes the fun part. You get to redeem those points for hundreds of rewards, including Amazon and Visa gift cards. So in short, by buying candy bars today and scanning your receipt with Fetch, you earn points that'll get you even more candy bars tomorrow. And that, my friends, is what's called big brain moves. And I cannot stress enough that any receipt from any retail store can be scanned to get you points. I tried to trick the app with some really unusual items from really obscure local stores. Fetch Rewards wasn't fooled for a second. Gave me my points like the good boy that it is. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Yes, you are, Fetch app. Yes, you are. You're a good boy. Right? I'm doing this right? I'm assuming that an app called Fetch would be personified as a dog. That makes sense to all of us, right? Anyway, Fetch is free. It's easy to use, and best of all, Fetch has a limited time offer for all you theorists out there. Download the app now and use the code Food Theory to get 3,000 points when you scan your first receipt. There's a link waiting for you down in the description below and everything. So to recap, the app, Fetch Rewards. The code, Food Theory. The episode concluded. A final huge thanks to Fetch for their sponsorship, and as always, friends, remember, it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.